Today I'm going to show you how to paint Necron vehicles the easy way. It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. And if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more, then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay, so today I'm going to be painting my Necron Doom Scythe and I'm going to explain how to paint a Necron vehicle very easily. I'm going to be using, of course, my Dynasty colours. However, I'm also going to be talking about how to adapt this paint scheme to suit your Dynasty. So I really hope you find the tutorial useful. Okay, so this is the Necron vehicle I am painting. It's a Knight Scythe stroke Doom Scythe. So mine is going to be interchangeable. And of course I've got quite a few little bits because of that. Now I'm going to dry brush this, which does sound quite an easy thing to do. However, I've noticed when dry brushing something which is quite big and also can be quite flat, it can be more difficult than you think, especially if you're using the wrong brush. So I want to have a chat about brushes first. So I am going to be using these brushes here. And these are the Artis Opus dry brushes. However, you don't have to use these. The key thing is that you need a brush with a very soft bristle. And also, for big areas like this, you need a big brush. For smaller areas, you need a small brush. Now, you don't necessarily have to have an actual dry brush. This is a base brush, for example. However, the key thing is you've got nice, soft bristles. That will give you a good effect when dry brushing. So I will be using this big brush when it comes to this big area on here, and then the smaller brushes on the other areas. But you could use any big brush as long as it's got nice soft bristles. Okay, so let's get painting. Okay, so before we actually paint, of course we need to prime the model and you'll need to prime it with a black primer. I've used a spray can here to prime it and then after the spray can I went in with a paint brush and just filled in the little misses. Sometimes when you spray with a can you'll miss a section. So just go in with your brush and paint that in. It's quite important to do that with this particular paint scheme because of the way that we're going to dry brush the model. Now as an alternative to what I'm going to show you, you could just spray this with a silver paint or paint it with a silver paint and then use a black wash to wash over the silver. However, the way that I'm going to do it with dry brushes, I find gives a more realistic metal look Plus, you don't necessarily have to wash it. You could wash it if you wanted to take it a bit further, but you don't have to. Okay, so we're going to start painting using Iron Breaker. And I've put some of that paint into my wet palette. I've also got an old cloth. This is actually just an old pair of jeans. And then I've got some kitchen towel. So what we're going to do is put some of this paint onto our dry brush. And then we're going to take it off using the uh, cloth. And then, just to make sure we haven't got too much on there, we're going to use the tissue, it's like a last test. You could use your thumb, some people use that as well, uh, just doing this. But I find that sometimes oil from your thumb can go onto the dry brush, so it's best just to use a tissue. And then, we're going to lightly dry brush this tank. So the great thing about having these very large bristles is we can just gently dry brush this and we won't leave any big splodges. It doesn't really matter if it takes you a while, just gently do it. When the paint runs out, put some more on. Take it off with your cloth, then use your tissue to make sure you haven't got too much on there. And then continue to dry brush. And you're going to be looking to do this, obviously, all over the vehicle. Now, don't worry if this first coat is quite blotchy and some of the black is coming through in some areas. That's okay, because we are going to do a second coat with a different colour, which will just finish the effect off. But just do that all over, and then we'll be back. 
Okay, so there you go, that's done all over. The only sections that I haven't done are these little pieces where I know they are gonna end up being black anyway. Now one little note here is if you do accidentally splodge a little bit too much silver paint, what you can do is if you recognize you've done it straight away, is potentially you could wipe the paint off with your finger. If that doesn't work, then just get some black paint and gently dry brush some black paint over the silver paint and then re-dry brush it silver. Now as I said, this is looking a little bit patchy, but that's fine because now we're going to move on to the second stage. Okay, so we are ready for the next stage. However, I paint all of my vehicles a different color to my infantry. So the man inside, he will get a different paint scheme to this. So I'm just going to paint the vehicle first and I'm going to use lead belcher. So I've got some of that already in my wet pallets there. I'm going to use my big dry brush again and we're going to repeat what we've just done over the top of that first coat. Now what this will do, it will make the metal a little bit more uh, dense, I suppose you could say, but it would also keep the patchiness there as well, so you get a nice metal look without having to use any washes. So just repeat this all over until you've got a nice consistent silver. We will be washing this, but only in these big recesses. Anything that's big will be blacking in just to give it some contrast. But you'll notice all of these little Necron symbols here, well, they don't really need a wash because they're all blacked in anyway. You could go in if you wanted to and put a wash in there, but it isn't needed with this particular paint scheme. Okay, so I'm going to go over all of this and I'm gonna go over all of the extras like the vehicle portals and the weapon options. And I'm gonna do exactly the same. It's only the man inside which is gonna be a different color. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so that is that layer done. Now, what I'm going to do is paint this driver here next. And before we do that, so I want to have a chat about my color choices. Okay, so when I started the hobby in 2001, we were on this codex, and it was this picture on front of the codex that got me hooked to Necrons. Now, I have previously made a review video of this codex, which I'll link up in the description below, but I wanted to show you this picture here, this tomb, which you may recognise from my battle reports. Yes, I actually copied this from the old codex, and there's a lot of hobby stuff in there. And we had a good number of choices when it came to colour schemes. Now obviously back in the days we didn't have dynasties, so these aren't necessarily dynasty colour schemes, these are just choices of colour schemes that you could maybe go for. And I had a good look at this codex, and I chose this colour scheme just here. The main reason I chose this is because it reminded me of a Terminator, because I was a huge Terminator fan, and this looks like a T-800. So I painted him in the colours that they list here, which is Chainmail, which of course is now Ironbreaker. It then says do an armour wash of black. Now I didn't know what washes was back then. I actually went in and I painted all of the recesses with black paint. And then finally it says Methril Silver, which is effectively now replaced with Rune Fang Steel. And this gives a nice shiny look. So what we're going to do is paint our driver using Rune Fang Steel. Now this was the unit which I painted first for my army, but then when it came to other units like a destroyer, I actually decided to paint the destroyer body with bolt gun metal, or now as it's called, lead boucher. And then that gave me a bit of a difference between the vehicles and the infantry. So we are going to paint this driver with Rune Fang Steel. Now one point when you're using this paint, you have to give it a really good shake, which I've done. I've put some on my wet palette. I've got my materials here ready to dry brush with a small dry brush. Now what I did discover when using this particular colour, it does make it actually quite shiny. And to be honest, it was a bit too shiny for me. So I did something else to my warriors when I first started, which is quite unusual, but it's how I painted mine. So I will show you what I do. But first of all, we need to dry brush this with a Rune Fang Steel, which to be fair is a very similar colour to 
the methyl silver which I used previously. So again we are just literally going to gently dry brush all over the miniature and just build up that colour so we've got a nice shiny silver. But of course we still want that mottled type effect as well so that's why we are still dry brushing rather than painting the colour on. Okay so that is all done, of course I've done the legs in here as well. Now I was a lot messier when I was dry brushing when I first started and yes I had to go in with some black paint in certain areas like the ribs for example but now I don't have to do that because I've got those black ribs already. However it is still a little bit shiny and because I'm matching this guy into my army from previous days, well this is what I did, bearing in mind I knew nothing about painting, but what I did to take the shininess away slightly is I got some bolt gun metal which is of course now lead boucher and I just dry brushed this back over some of the big joints, so on his forearms just on the top there and I found that this gave quite a nice sort of oily effect I didn't do it over all of the model, just on the big section, so on the arms, on the, the uh, thighs, on the tops here where he's got his little shoulder plates, and I just toned down that silver look, but still kept them quite bright at the same time. Like I said, it was a, almost like an oily effect. So that's all I did, it wasn't too much, but it did help, I felt, just tone it down. So I'm gonna do this. And of course, I'm just sharing this with you because, well, this is how I paint mine, uh, which stems back to when I first started. Okay, so that is the silver done, and like I said, no washes needed, and we've got a great metal look. Now you could take this a little bit further, and you could go in with a black wash, and just wash all of these little recesses, just to really make them pop if you wanted to. However, I don't do that with my army, but I do want to make this metal pop a little bit more. So what I do is I go in and I paint black into some of the areas. I'm going to be painting it into this big rib section all along the front section here, and also on the symbols on here. Now, of course, this needs to go onto here, but I haven't glued it on because I'm going to be painting the man inside but I am going to paint black in here because it will really help it pop so I've got some black on my paint palette it's watered down slightly so it's not too thick and I'm literally just going to paint into this little area here with this black paint and once finished it will really help the metal finish look cool okay let's finish this up and I will show you how it looks Okay, so that's done, and as I said, it just helps just give the metal work a little bit of contrast. I think it works really well, and it saves you having to wash in all of the recesses. Just pick those big ones. As I said, the ribs are an ideal place, and we've got those all over our vehicles, the ghost arcs, annihilation barges, etc. So just paint some of those ribs in black, and it really helps the metal pop. Right, on to the next stage. Okay, so that's the bulk of the vehicle painted. We are now ready to detail this miniature. Now, depending on which dynasty you're painting, you can change the detailing color to suit. So, for example, if you were painting Novok, you could do it in red. If it was Nihilic, then you could do it in blue. Just change your color to represent the dynasty. Now, I have my own dynasty, so I'll be using my own colors, which is green, white, and gold. But no matter what color you're choosing, the basic principle of what I'm doing is going to work for you. So, for example, if you're painting it in red, then just replace the color that I'm using with red. So I'm going to be using Warpstone Glow Green. So if you're using a red, then use a similar mid-tone red to this. And then we're going to gradually build up the color from there. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to paint that on everything that I want to be green. Okay, so that's that color down. And as you can see, there's not too much green on this tank because Mostly my army is silver. However, we've got some spots colors there. Now, some of the areas I haven't painted green yet, and that's because I'm going to use the next color to do the base coats of that. 
and our next colour is going to be this one here, Mute Green. So I'm going to highlight all of the green that we've painted so far. Let's have a chat about how I'm going to do that. Okay, so first of all, this big gun here, I've got no green on there at the moment, but eventually it's going to look like that. So I'm going to go in to all of these little recessed areas of the front of the gun with that mute green, and I'll be highlighting that up with another green as well because I wanted quite a bright green on the end of that gun. However, the other pieces here will be highlighted with just the mute green. Now just a word on this piece here, I haven't done the little orb inside there because that will be totally covered up when that section goes on, you just won't be able to see it. So I didn't bother painting that. Now talking of this little portal, I'm going to paint the portal similar to how I did that one there. So I'm going to dry brush it with the mute green first. I'm going to wash it with a green wash. And then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to hand paint in those little twirly sections. So that's that piece. Now in terms of the guns, I wanted to have a chat about them. When Tesla was first announced, well, I didn't particularly like having Tesla guns in my army because I grew up with Gauss guns only and in particular green rods. So when it came to painting these, I tried to paint them as best I could like a green rod, so just a bright green basically. So that's all I'm going to do, I'm going to layer on the mute green over the top of that but just leaving the recesses with that darker layer. Now I did actually go into the recesses with Caliban green rather than the Warpstone green just because that's how I previously painted my guns. I've also used that Caliban green on the inside edge of this little wire. You may not be able to see it but that's got Caliban green on as well. So I'm going to just feather in those particular layers of paint. All three greens will show up just to give this a little bit more of an energy look. I'm also going to feather in stroke a little glaze of the orb which is there. The rest of the orbs will just get painted with the mute green straight over. Now if you're not familiar with some of the techniques I've been talking about like glazing and feathering, you could literally just go in and block in the mute green colour. Just leave the original base coat in the recessed areas just to give it a little bit more depth. Now I do have tutorials on how to do things like feathering and glazing, so I will link those up in the description below so you can check them out. But basically you just need to highlight the green with this mute green to help make the green pop. Okay so that is the green all done and just for reference of course I didn't do one thick coat. Both of these layers of green were more than one layer, two to three layers of each one. And the green is now done, I'm very happy with it. So like I said I blocked in some of the areas, I glazed some of these areas in. This was dry brushed here, then I tidied the silver up afterwards and this was just blocked in. Now if you wanted to of course you could add the colour which you've used here onto some of the panels of the vehicle if you wanted to, just to match your dynasty or to bring your dynasty theme into the model a little bit more. It's just not how I paint them. So next I'm going to block in all of the areas that I want black. So I'll be using the standard Games Workshop black paint and I'm going to paint over probably be two layers, just carefully blacking in all of the black areas without getting it onto the green. This gun here, which is one of these, has black on these areas and the little wires, for example. So I'm just going to carefully block in all of the black. I always find that the black with the silver works quite well. So if you wanted to introduce some black into your vehicles, then please do so. Okay, so that is all the black painted. And as you can see, it really sets the silver off now. Now it's all nice and neat. We're ready to move on to the next stage because although the black is obviously base coated, at the moment we've got no highlights on it. So I am going to highlight it. Now you may have noticed I've also glued on these two sections here because I've got to the point where I don't have to have them loose to get in to paint that crystal. So I've just glued them on. I'm going to very, very gently dry brush over the top of the black with lead belcher, but not all over, just in certain places. Just going to hit a few of the spots, almost to look like chipping, just to give the black a little bit more detail. Now, talking of 
dry brushing and paint, well, I've just redone my paint palette because I noticed my previous one which I had was getting rather old. So this is a brand new Chinese tub. It's got a sponge in the bottom, some tissue paper on the top, obviously with water in it. And then on the top I've laid some baking paper, also known as perchant paper. And that is how we make a wet palette, obviously with the lid for when you're not using it. So I've just put some lead belcher onto my wet palette and we are now ready for the next stage, which as I said is going to be a very gentle dry brush with our dry brush on the black. So we're going to load up our brush, we're going to take pretty much all of this off, make sure there's hardly anything on there, and then just gently go over some of the edges, not all of the edges, some of the edges. This is just how I paint my black. I mean, you can paint it however you like, but I definitely want a black finish. I don't want it to go back to looking like metal. So just do a few strokes of this dry brushing, just in certain areas, all over the black. And then once you've done that, we'll be back for the final stages. Okay, so that is all done. And as you can see, it's quite subtle, but it does add just a little bit more depth to the black. Right, so that's all of the main painting done. I'm now going to go in and do my little extra spot colours, which in my army is usually gold as the primary spot colour, and then sometimes white. However, white doesn't make it onto all of my units, and it doesn't make it onto my Night Scythe stroke Doom Scythe. So for my gold, I use this colour, Shining Gold, which is now a discontinued gold, and it's very difficult to get. I actually have to thank some people in the Wargamers Unification Facebook group for supplying me with some shining gold. I really appreciate you guys, uh, three guys who sent me some paint. So, shining gold is going to be my next colour. I'm going to add it to these little symbols on here. And also, there's an extra little section here which I'm going to add it to as well. So I'm going to paint it shining gold going to let it dry, I will wash it black and then I'll do a little highlight of Shining Gold and Iron Breaker, just a very small highlight. Then I'll be able to glue all of these pieces together because we will be finished. And there you go, it's all complete. Of course the Doomsday Cannon and the portal just pushes into place, you don't even need magnets, which is the great thing about this kit. And it's looking pretty cool in both versions. I really hope that you'd like it. I hope that it was useful. And as you can see, it was very easy to do. Now what I would recommend is you watch these videos here next. These will teach you how to do things like glazing, layering, and wet blending. And I'll see you in the next video. Beam me up.